first edition of TechStream. If you're like me and own one of the first edition PlayStation controllers, then you've probably had a run-in with the busted nubs. Today I'm going to be showing you how to change out the sticks with either the replacement PS4 sticks or the Xbox One sticks. So there are a few things you're going to need when you start here. It will be a small screwdriver that will hold the mini sized bits, a small Phillips head bit, a small flat head bit, uh, a small pair of player, or small pair of pliers, a Molex connector, it's not necessary but it is nice to have as well, and then a small pair of tweezers, also not necessary but they are nice to have. Alright, there are a couple choices for fixing your your controller, as I said here. We just have the, the little clip-on nubs as well. They go on nicely, they work nicely, but not quite the quality that you'd like. So first we're going to start on the back here, and you will see that there are four Phillips head screwdriver or screw bits in here, one in the bottom one on the bottom the other side, and then two on the top as well. Uh, you will notice that I've removed the, the Sony serial number here. Uh, there was a small indent there, so I thought there might be a screw, but there's none. Other than that, let's get started. You want to start by inserting your bit if you have to. Flip it around so you guys can see here. We'll start removing these here. See, it seems I've got a bit too big of a bit, and I'll just change that out in one sec. I've got a small computer repair kit here. It's an off-brand called Dynex. It's all right. I got a pretty good deal on it because when I when I bought it, uh, somebody had stole the screwdriver, the flashlight, and a couple of the bits here. But that's all right because I did not need those at all. Here we are. Oh, just a bit smaller. Perfect. There we are. And the cool thing about this screwdriver, it, it extends and retracts. It's pretty cool, but really only need if you need to get in tighter places. So we're going to start by removing the four screws here. Actually, I should have got a small bucket of some sort to hold these because they can they can be lost quite easily being so small. I really like the PlayStation controller for being a lot easier to take apart. No special screwdriver needed. But if you did need it, the uh, the iFixit screwdriver kit is the number one to go for. Another quick thing, when you have this open, you might want to get a small a toothpick or some sort of uh, wooden piece to scrape out the gunk that gets caught up in the edges there. Last one here. So after you've got those removed, this is going to be the tricky part here. You're going to want to gently pull up on both sides to get it loose. You should hear a small snapping sound, don't worry about that. There we go, and once it pops up fully, the tricky part is getting the triggers to go through without losing the spring inside of the trigger because it will go flying and I have dark floors so basically impossible to find. Oh perfect. That was actually probably the fastest I've ever done this. And so with the small pair of pliers here you're gonna want to remove the blue tab. I don't know if you can see that like under the light. The small blue tab and it's just a small ribbon cable that will detach there. Show it up closer for you guys here. It's not an actual plastic connector at all. It is just a small ribbon cable with a blue tab on it to make it a little easier to take apart. Let's move that off to the side here. And then from here, this is where I bring in my Molex disconnector to remove the battery. Again, you don't need to use this. You can use a small screwdriver or even just pull on it. I just like to use the connector mover it, instead of pulling on the wire there and then your battery is removed. Now if you have a PlayStation 3 controller you can actually take the battery out of that 
and remove these small edges of plastic around here and you'll be able to fit a, uh, a full-size PlayStation 3 battery in there and it's, uh, it's got a bit more milliamp hours on it so you get a lot more uh, life out of your controller. And then from here we're going to go down to this little screw in the middle of the battery compartment and that'll be our last screw to remove. And then be warned not to pull too hard because we still have to disconnect the, the ribbon cable from the, uh, the touchpad on the front. All right, there's done. Actually, I can get to the ribbon cable here. It is just up at the top here on the, I guess, my left, your right. There we are. Now that we have that finished, we should be able to pry this right off. It should be just a gentle lift. Actually, I should note that the ribbon cable here, it does bend and it'll get stuck and it has to uh, go right through this small slit in the plastic. So what I do is I take it out first, and then I'll just bend it upwards so that it's flat and doesn't grab. It can be a little tricky, but you'll get there. Just a little bit of fiddling. Yeah, see there, it's, it's connecting. Force it down, there we are. And you'll want to keep your controller facing this way so that it does not lose all of the buttons because I did that the first time and it was not fun picking them all up and then reattaching them. All right, and here we are through with the top connector. You can put that aside as well. And we are just going to want to flip this guy over It'll be a bit loose here, so the uh, the motherboard is not connected in any way. There we go, put that back down. See from here, I like to have a little box handy so that I can throw the actual controller right on top and then it just holds it perfectly for the, uh, the stands to put it there. So I don't have to worry about it wiggling all over just a little bit. And then from here it's simple as giving a small but finesse tug on each of the control sticks. You don't want to pull too hard and break it. Though if you do break the, the actual uh, sticks themselves you don't have to worry because you will have replacements. I hope. There. Now both of them are removed. I'm going to bring in my replacement sticks. I bought the green Xbox One replacement sticks. They're probably from China. Uh, they're all right made, a little bit rough around the edges. But other than that, they're quite nice. Uh, I like the color. It cost me around $6. But then I did pay a little extra for shipping because I do not like to wait. From here, I'm just going to get them situated. You will notice that there is a slight groove here. And that'll fit right over the same shape of the stick. Just want to get those situated on top. And then from there, oops, sorry. As you can tell, I'm Canadian with that. You just want to get it situated. And then from the bottom, just give it a slight press. You want to keep it, uh, you want to keep it steady. But it can be a bit difficult sometimes when it's trying to fling all over the place. There we are. There will be no click or anything. It'll just be, uh, it'll just slide right down. It does take a little bit of finesse, but once you get it, it is quite easy. There we go again. They are both on there. All right, and like I said, you'll want to keep a small stick of some sort here so that you can really clean out the edges. You know, because if you're going to do a job, you might as well do it good. Have a nice clean controller. I've already done this earlier, but I'm just doing it again because I've played for a couple hours with it before I made the video. It's really gross seeing what a what just handling a control will do to it. Nasty. Perfect. Let's do the other side really quick. It's actually some what looks like Coca-Cola. Yeah, sure. I swear I'm not fat. Alright, 
So now that we have that done, we're going to want to keep our front housing off or upside down again so that it doesn't lose all the all the bits. And you're going to want to hold the actual motherboard of it or else it'll just it'll just fall right off if you hold it. It should it's pretty easy to connect here. You're just going to want to line up the the big towers here, the stands with the holes on the motherboard itself. Quite easy, but sometimes it can take a little bit to get them situated nicely. There we are. And then from there, you're just gonna, gonna, gonna wanna do everything backwards. So if we go, actually, I'll just take these. You can actually take this, uh, the battery compartment off. I'll just switch over to my handy dandy Phillips head here. It can be a little easier for getting the ribbon cable back on. Oops. There we are. So you will see that the underneath the battery compartment there are these small prongs on either side in the same spot. You give them a slight tug there and it should come right off. Let me just get the other one here as well. Sweet. And now you'll have a really easy time going at the, the ribbon cable. I'm just going to grab it with my pliers again. It makes it a lot easier to get it inside. You have, a, you have a line there to show you exactly when it's fully inserted. And there we have it. And then we'll just snap the compartment back on here. Quite easy. And there we are. Actually, I missed that up, didn't I? Yeah, it goes right in the hole. Perfect. And that just sort of sits on there like so. And then from there, you're going to want to get your, your Phillips screwdriver and your Phillips screw and screw it back in through the middle post. Show you what that one is in a second here. Doo -doo -doo. Oops. I should have got the magnetic one. So you just want to go right into the section with the white ring there. Almost lift it up again so it actually has something to contact. And then slide it back in. Again, you're going to want to go tight, but not tight enough so the board cracks. When it starts getting tough, you should stop, but also shake it. So if you, if you notice a, a shaking, you should put it back as well. I'll screw it back down a little bit more. There we are. So if I move the, try and move it around it, it's nice and snug, which is good. And from there, I like to put in the battery first. And it doesn't have anything to hold it in necessarily. Just a small hook there to hold the Molex connector down. There we are, just plug it in and then slightly press. I like to press right on the, uh, put my fingernail over the plastic and also over the, the edges of the connectors there just to make sure that they don't get pushed out because that sometimes does happen. From there, you are basically done for the modifications. All we have now is to put the reverse cover back on and also connect the, the light pads connector as well, the ribbon cable. And it's quite easy. It does take a little bit to get in there. You're gonna wanna have the blue tab facing outward instead of the, the connections. From here it might get a little harder to show because it does have to be quite close. But once you get it in the slot there, a little shaky. It's quite cold up here in Canada, even though it's only September, was it 4th? Yeah, September 4th. There we are, and that is fully inserted. From there, just do the standard. I like to go up first to the top here and sort of get it right over the triggers. Can be a bit of a, a pain to get these back on as well. Then again, as long as you finesse it right, it should slide on quite easily without breaking anything. Just applying strong but even pressure. There's one side, there's the other side, there's the last bit. Then just crunch it right closed, you hear all the clicks. So now it is basically finished, we just have to put the our Phillips head screws back in. As you can see, the green looks quite nice with the, uh, the white. I had a little bit of trouble uh, deciding if I wanted to go for the blue or the red even. 
uh, but I think in a future video I might be doing a paint job on this with sort of like a, a radioactive green splatter. I think it might look good. Uh, I'll have to remove this small piece of camo wrap that I had left over from my rifle. I can just, it's really nice because you can still touch through it. I use it on my touchpad on my laptop as well. Yeah, we'll just finish these up here. Get our four little screws that thankfully have not rolled off the table. And then just from doing car installations, I always do a crisscross pattern when tightening bolts so that you don't over torque one side. Again, it's not needed, but you might as well. All right, there we are. This last bit. I actually kind of don't like that it extends because it always extends right out. Can be quite annoying, but who cares? Start from the bottom again. And now we're here. The last and final screw before we are finished our PlayStation 4 controller uh, fix. Dang it. So now I was also going to do an unboxing of these these replacement sticks, but it didn't come with much packaging. Straight out of China, here we are. Just in a little plastic bag. Two green Xbox dot 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 B sticks. Thumbstick new. Thank you, China. And there we have it. The finished Sony PS4 controller thumbstick replacement. It worked perfectly. All of our buttons are working. Let's turn this guy on. And the light bar is on there, so we are good to go. Hope I didn't just turn my PlayStation 4 on upstairs because I didn't want to turn it on. Alright. As you see, from a busted nub to a brand new one, and it's looking good. I've always preferred the Xbox One sticks anyway. All right, thanks for tuning in and watching my first episode of TechStream. I know which I did there. Um, come back again some other time. Maybe subscribe, like the video. Only if you feel like it warrants that. But I'm gonna be working on some other videos as well. Uh, I like tech, uh, games, guns, all that. I got a few guns if you guys wanna see me blow some stuff up, because I do that quite often. Including, I think I actually have a channel or a video on this channel of me shooting an, an iMac. It wasn't very great because I was only using a target load, but still, it's good fun. Alright, thanks for watching.